If you're not practice trading quite often, all you're doing is listening to us, you are missing out on so much you could be learning. We've got great introductory videos. If you don't know the first thing about stock charting, I'm going to attach a great one in the show notes, and I want you to listen to that. Then I want you to print out the trade worksheet. We have PDFs available. Those are also in the show notes. And when we talk about trades being possible, I want you to immediately start practice trading. We also have a great video on how you can use free stock charts and TC2000. That's what we use. One's the, the first is the free service and TC2000 is the paid service. We have a discount on the paid one when you get ready for that. But don't go there yet. Just use the trade worksheet. You can also, when you do your buy-in, that is your practice trade, we have a video I'll attach also that shows you how to use freestockcharts.com and TC2000 to track things. That is moment by moment seeing if your trade is successful or not. And I want you to start really practicing because perfect practice makes perfect. And if you're not practicing, you're not learning. You're just sitting here listening to me and you're wasting your time. So let's jump into these charts. We see stocks are mixed for the day. The S&P 500 is down. The NASDAQ 100 is up. Bonds are up. Gold is up. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. Now, we see a lot of green up candles. And again, another decent week is shaping up. Even the S&P was down 0.22% for the day. Derivative oscillators gaining upward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading up even stronger than it was in the prior week. We have a green up candle where the wick is above the prior week's wick. How do you like that alliteration? Uh, we see price movement is above the two-day trend line and above the weekly. And of course, our two-day and our weekly and a confirmed up moves. So hopefully some of you are practicing trades right now. We look at the two-day chart and of course we see that this latest two-day candle is now drawn and it is a nice strong upwardly moving candle. Price movement is decently above the two-day trend line, well above the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillator still losing upward momentum, still heading down. Price percent oscillator is still moving up, but appears to be weakening some. But again, price movement's moving up. Keep your eye on that closely. What do we see on the four-hour chart? Well, at the end of the day, it was trying to cross over going down. Had a down morning, bit of a recovery in the afternoon. What we really see is a lot of sideways slippage. So pay attention, particularly on Friday, those of you who jumped in any kind of up move, be careful. Keep your eye on things. Again, don't forget, once you jump in using a four-hour chart, when you have the two-day and the weekly moving up, the trend is typically your friend. Remember how we started yesterday's episode? The trend is your friend until the end. And there can be pullbacks. In fact, we saw a pullback occur after a sideways slide for two days, ending on the afternoon of Wednesday the 6th, and then we had a day and a half down, and then we had the latest spike up. So again, watch your bigger charts, pay attention to the four-hour chart, but don't give up hope. Continue to practice. That's what this is about. And if you're using your trade worksheet, you're taking notes constantly as to what's going on, what your thinking is, what you think you should be doing, so you can do an after-action and Monday morning quarterback what it is you did to learn from it. Each of these charts has its own personality and moves differently at different times of year of the year. So it's very important that you practice, that you follow these on a daily basis, and that you learn and keep learning. The, car, the charts keep changing. We're going from SPY, that is the S&P 500. We're heading now to the NASDAQ 100. It, conversely, was up for the day, even though the S&P was down. NASDAQ 100, as represented by QQQ, the cubes, people call it different things. It's the tech stocks. They were up for the day. Nice green up candle on the weekly chart. Going into the sixth week of decent up movement, we're finishing up on Friday, the third week since the weekly vertical crossover, the most powerful signal we have. We had one of those occur on the 25th of January. Those typically portend massive movement in one direction or another. The prior one portended massive movement down back in late September. This one 
has been massive movement up, not as much as it came down, but of course we had the prior run up uh, that we had a signal on back on the week ending the 1st of July. So again, we love the big charts, big charts, big money, small charts, small money. So we concentrate on these weekly vertical crossovers. People may say, well, those don't happen all that much. They don't have to, my friends. When they work, they go up uh, many, many dollars, sometimes <clears throat> hundreds of dollars. So again, they will be, or lots of percentages, let's put it that way. That's what counts. And so we pay attention to those because they show massive changes in sentiment in the market. And that's what we're looking for. Remember, we are stock followers. We are trend followers. We are waiting for trends. And the biggest trend we typically follow, except for once a quarter, the quarterly chart, the biggest trend we typically follow is the weekly chart. And again, going into the third week of up movement since the weekly vertical crossover, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum, price percent oscillator moving up nicely. Strong up movement on the weekly chart. Two-day chart, what do we see? It's going up nicely. Things had peaked off previously, peaked previously back on the high reached on Wednesday, the two-day candle ending Wednesday, the 6th of February, and that was at 171.37. This latest chart, 172.16. So not quite a dollar up higher. That's nice. Derivative oscillator still losing momentum slightly uh, each time. Derivative oscillator still heading up. So that's a good sign on those bigger charts. Now, let's get into the minutia. What do we see going on on the four hour chart? It is really laminated. Looks like it's moved over, not pulling away from that red signal line yet because we've had this sideways slide. Derivative oscillator still gaining upward momentum. So pay close attention. Those of you who are in accused trade right now, accused practice trade, pay, pay, pay close attention to what's going on there. Very important. So we go from the four hour chart back to the weekly chart. We go to bonds up 0.57% quite nicely for the day. Looks like we're going into a third week of up movement. The problem is the high the prior week was 122.47. So far this week, 122.20. So it's not topped where it did in the prior week. Price percent oscillator was looking a little flatter than it is now. Yesterday, moving up a little more. Derivative oscillator continuing to lose upward momentum. Remember, we've seen 20-year bonds since the 30th of November when that weekly vertical crossover occurred, they moved up for many weeks and then have really been sliding sideways since they topped all the way back on at the beginning of the year, the first week of the year ending Friday the 4th of January. So we go from the weekly chart to the two-day chart. And of course, we don't have a crossover still. You can see that sideways slide in effect. However, the Derivative oscillators flipped over to positive. So maybe, maybe we'll see something happen. This latest was a doji, a red doji, which means lots and lots and lots of indecision tending down. But again, the price percent oscillator is still in a down move running parallel to the red signal line. So no crossover yet, no trade on bonds. We'll continue to watch and see what we see. What does the four hour chart tell us? Well, moved up nicely in the morning. Uh, nice move up. First one we've seen in about one, two, two and a half, three days. Uh, nice to see an open box green candle with a wick on top, nothing on the bottom. Bit of a pullback in the afternoon. Don't have a crossover yet on that four hour chart. So we'll just continue to watch, see what we see in bonds. Lastly, as always, we go to gold up 0.56% for the day. And we see so far in the latest week, gold is still in a confirmed up move and has been all the way back to when? All the way back to the week ending the 5th of October. And of course, that weekly chart has been beautiful for us for many, many, many months, years now. Only about one over the last three years or so that hasn't worked beautifully. That's why I keep it simple, my friends. Everybody running around, oh, I want to buy this, buy that, uh, scan and check out hundreds of charts every day. Why not just learn a few charts really, really well 
Practice those all the time until you get really, really good and can do this stuff in your sleep. Remember, all stocks can do is go up, down, or sideways. That's it. So again, we're not talking about rocket science. We're talking about stock charting. And it takes more than anything else, practice and perseverance. And if you're not willing to do that on a daily basis, you don't need to be listening to us. Let's talk about what's happening on this weekly chart. Really a sideways slide underway. Derivative oscillator peaked all the way back on the 11th of January, continuing to move down. We do see price movement is above the weekly trend line. Price percent oscillator still, still headed up. So we go from the weekly to the two-day, and of course it crossed over back on the two-day candle ending Tuesday the 12th, and it's again just sliding sideways, still in a down move, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator heading down. So that means we don't have a trade in gold at this point. What's that four-hour chart doing? Well, we can still see that sideways slide with a bunch of down bumps on it. And the derivative oscillators now losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillators heading up. Maybe it'll cross over. Maybe we'll see gold resume that upward trajectory. Haven't seen it happen yet. We'll continue to keep our eyes open and see what happens. Again, if stocks continue to move up, maybe gold will just stay sterile. If stocks rotate over and start hammering down, we might see, and again, we're going to let the charts lead us, we might see gold moving up again inversely to stocks. But we shall use these charts. And, of course, own gold, that magical chart, has again and again been the weekly. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day on Thursday. Go into Friday, the last day of the week. Don't forget at the conclusion of tomorrow's market, when it closes, we will be providing you with a comprehensive review and forecast for the week. We have a weekly worksheet a weekly market worksheet that you can and should fill out every week. If you don't do the daily, then you've got to at least do the weekly and use the trade worksheets. And you'll see those links in the show notes. If you're not subscribed to our free daily market podcast, along with our weekly review, comprehensive review and forecast, go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. It's free. Plus, you get all sorts of great trainings there and other things. And we'll put you those things promised in the show notes today. Check those out. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters. Don't forget to buy our book and be a Patreon sponsor if you want all the goodies, including how to uh, short chart, uh, actually chart short things like the two-hour chart if you're interested in that. If you do want to use some smaller charts, also how to chart Bitcoin. And we have a Bitcoin chart that we share with you. And we also have great training on the quarterly chart. All that's available for our Patreon supporters. Plus, depending on your level, you can get a free book. If you haven't purchased our book, we're in the eighth printing and those are starting to run low. So follow the link in the show notes. You can buy the book. You can become a Patreon supporter and we appreciate all of you. Write us, cw at chartingwealth.com. Always happy to hear from you. God bless again.